He's no color. He's no color? He's no color. He's black. He, he's supposed to be brown. So, according to the Bible, okay. that so, the white man wrote. So slow so down for a second. They own self. So uh, you just contradicted yourself. your father black in the bible it go to numbers 1 and 18 it declares who you are by your father now which this is what you call yourself but this is what god calls you your father right what tribe are you from according to the bible judah judah right that is your god given name right but only through the the uh the brutalization of slavery, did you lose your name just like Kunta Kinte? We're, we're Toby's now. No, yes, you are. Look, when I asked you your nationality, oh, oh, okay, okay, you didn't okay, say okay. Judah. You didn't say that I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. You said I'm an African American. See? We become Toby's here in America. Really? Because they brutalized us, they beat us, they raped, pillaged, and spoiled us as a people. Right. You understand that? And it, it took some good thought. But it also, before everything got put together, we sinned against our God. Bring it up. So we gave up on God. Right. And keeping God's commandments. Right. So much so that now we live in these situations and we're trying to figure our way up. Bring right. It up. So you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. There's no such thing as mixed amongst our people. Let's get that. Numbers 1 and 18. Read. Book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. Uh -huh. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigrees. Your bloodline, your lineage. By? And of their families. Uh -huh. By the house of their fathers. So it don't matter. Uh, uh, I will get to that next. But your lineage is based off who your father is, what nationality your father is. Y'all understand that? Yeah, yeah. But a lot of times in our community, we say, well, I'm mixed, I'm black and white. I'm, matter of fact, they'll say I'm white and black. We'll put black at the bottom like it's no good, right? But that's that mental construct that we come from. Now, we were dealing on Egypt. Egypt, how our people got here to slavery. Matter of fact, go back to Deuteronomy 28, and I want verse 32. This is how we know that we are the Israelites. That's not first and foremost. Learning who we are, how we know who we are. Did our people go through slavery? Have we been oppressed since the time of slavery? Are we still lost as a people after slavery? Is our community in shambles? Do you, I, I need some answers, brother. I need y'all to help me out. Because what has to happen is we have to fix our situation. How do we fix our situation? By relying on God. You got one question. Today is the Sabbath. So you can come by that address today. Keeping the Holy Sabbath. Now watch this. Yeah, so watch this. What day do they tell us that we should go to church? On Sunday. Now, where did we learn that? Out from the white people. From the white people. Now, what do white people call us as a people? Now, what do you call yourself? A human being. All right. They're human. Now, watch this. They're human beings, too. Yeah. Watch this. This image right here shows that they are Jesus Christ and right. they are God. So how do you differentiate or uh, make yourself different? Right. What color is Christ? What color is he? He's no color. He's no color? He's no color. He's black. He, he's supposed to be brown. 
So, so going to the Bible okay. that so, the white man wrote. So slow down for a second. They own self. So uh, you just contradicted yourself. Because you just, I, I asked the question, and y'all tell me, y'all, we can run back the video. But I said, what color is Christ? And you said, the first answer was, there is no color. Well, according, to the, according to the calendar, Sunday is the first day of the week. Right. So, Saturday, so how do we get from, Saturday hold on. How do we get from Christ the day to the week. first day of the week? Saturday is the seventh day of the week. Right. So, he rested on the seventh day. Saturday is supposed to be the day of rest. Now, what, co what color is Christ that rested on the Seventh day? Well, the white man say he wasn't uh, uh, in the uh, Bible. Uh, they say he. I he don't got care about the Bible. Well, I want to know what the Bible bronze. says. Let's hear what the Bible says. The Bible says he had eyes of fire, hair wool. Let's read it. Huh? Let's read it. Yeah, come yeah, come yeah, here for a second. Right. And what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? I'll be back. No, I'm just asking what your I'm name is. What's your name? Huh? What is your name? My name is Stacy. Stacy. Oh, okay. So Stacy. Uh, Stacy, are you drunk? I'm trying to get there. You're trying to get there. Why? Because Jesus drank wine. That's all I drank. Oh, huh? Yeah. He don't speak against drinking. So, he speak against now, drinking. the question I asked was, are wine. you drunk? No, I'm not drunk. You're trying to get drunk. Yeah, I'm trying. Now, Christ didn't drink to get drunk. He I drank in he moderation. He, right. He drank in right? moderation. So, what color was Christ again? I told you he had skin of bronze, they say. i never seen the man. Okay, let's read it. Let's read it. The book of Revelation. Chapter 1 and verse 14. Bring it out. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the Bible describes Christ. We don't have to guess about it. His head, the hairs on his head and the hairs on his face, because he is a man, right. is white in color and woolly in texture. Right? We don't. As white as snow. As white as snow. That was the color. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes were what color? His hairs or his eyes? His eyes. Were, why? Why were his eyes red like fire? I know my eyes red. They be <laughs> right. So let's let's get that prophecy so that you understand why Christ's eyes were red. Do you know why Christ's eyes were red, bro? Let's read it. Because it's written in the Bible, but they don't teach us the Bible properly. They don't even teach us back. our identity. Read the book of Genesis, like chapter forty-nine, and verse twelve. Uh, you know, his eyes shall be red with wine. So Christ's eyes were going to be red with wine. Not booze for him. <laughs> Christ drank the good stuff, right? That mad dog, he ain't had no mad dog 2020. Right, Christ had that good wine. But he drank it in moderation. So don't drink excessively. That is what destroys our people physically, mentally, spiritually. And that's why our oppressors can lie to us. We're trying to deal with stress. We're trying to cope with our situation. We're trying to cope with our depression, right. our oppression as a people. Right. And then we find ourselves in more and more sin. Right. And the longer we stay in our sin, the more we will stay in the conditions similar to slavery. Right. So our people have to come back to keeping God's laws or remain a slave. Right, right. Now watch this. Part of that slave mentality a lot of our people have been celebrating these last two weeks where they're trying to get their Christmas wishes fulfilled. Yeah. Where they're trying to create a New Year's resolution. What? Now, my brother right here, let me ask you a question real quick, real quick. Last year, you had a New Year's resolution, right? This year, you got a New Year's resolution. Can I ask what it is? It's up for yourself. Now, let me ask this question. What is a resolution? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Something you try to accomplish, I guess. Something you try to accomplish because what does, what does resolution mean? Huh? So uh, uh, the root word of it is to resolve. So a resolution is supposed to solve a problem that we see. Right. Now, most people's resolution has something to do with money, right? Teach. But watch this. What is that going to do for a single parent households? I think they get government assistance, right? Bring it out. But how are we going to stop that happening? How are we going to stop the robbing and the killing that happens in our neighborhood that is rooted in people trying to get money? Bring it you understand that? A lot, of, and we're, we're not saying that anything is wrong with money, but the things that our people are doing to get money is where we see the sin. If I pull out a gun and rob you for your money, you worked hard for that thing. 
But what does the Bible give as a solution? Let, let me show you something on that, that robbing and stealing. Get Ephesians 4 and 28. Because what should be happening is our people should be looking for a resolution by following some type of instructions. That's right. A lot of our people just saying what sounds good. Right. And we don't do anything that's of value. Would you agree? Would you agree? We, we talk a good game. Let's read how to solve robbing and killing in our communities. Read. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 28. Uh -huh. yeah. Let him that stole steal no more. Because ain't that one of the commandments found in the Bible? Thou shalt not steal. But some of our people used to be stick-up kids. Right. Robber, robbing people, right? But right. the Bible says this is the instruction that you must keep. Read it again. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him that stole steal no more. Because what? Is money evil? Say it again. Say it again. You said money is the root of evil. Let's make sure we get that correct. You got that? I want, uh, that's Timothy 6. It's not money. It's not money. Because the money you earned honestly. But if I come and rob you, who did it dishonestly? Me. If I'm robbing you, I'm dishonestly gaining the money that you work hard for. Right. So it's not money that's evil. Right. It's the Negro behind the gun who's willing to shoot you and kill you yes. over there. Yes. So what does the Bible say? Let's clarify that because a lot of our people have a misunderstanding. You mean to tell me if somebody works hard for a, million, a, a job where they got a salary of a million dollars that they evil? No. They up. work hard. They probably invented something. Right. right? And we, we, we inspire that. We, we advocate for that amongst our people to use their minds wisely. See, but what we don't advocate for is this, read. The book of First Timothy, chapter six and verse 10. Uh -huh. you know, for the love of money. The love of money goes into our people being covetous. Our people having that covetous spirit on them to where I want what he has. He got those fresh wheat Tims on. I'm about to go stick him up. Those Hello. are mine. We what? see that happening in our community, you know? don't we? We will beat up our brother for the love of the things that are not ours that we can go out and earn honestly. But because we love the money and the love the covetous, love our wickedness so much, we will harm our own people. Right. Nowadays, the white man don't have to be the one beating us upside the head. He can put guns in the neighborhood and we'll do it ourselves. Right. But all of that is because of what, Reed? Well, the love of money is the root of all evil. Read on. Which? While some coveted after, while some coveted after, unrighteous gain of money, unrighteous gain of goods. That's what's wrong with our people. Because everybody want to get the bag. Since the 70s, our women have chosen the bag over choosing a righteous household. Bring it up. They have chosen the money coming from the government rather than having a man to set up discipline in the household, to set up discipline in the community, to set the community back in order. That, that's where we always have fallen, in the midst of our covetousness and idolatry. Right. Idolatry coming from Christmas, right. where we're worshiping other guys like Tammuz and Nimrod and all this foolishness, worshiping gifts and whoever gives us gifts. Right. That is the love of money, the love of covetousness. Yeah. That has destroyed our people. Right. Forgetting that we were those same gifts that the white man coveted over. Hey, Jim, I want this big old buck that you got, but you know what? I don't have the money right now or I don't want to pay for them. You know what, uh, uh, Ted? I'll give them to you on Christmas. We were those gifts That's on right. Christmas, yeah. black man. We were those things that were gifted from one slave plantation to the next. We were those people who were sacrificed for Thanksgiving that we so earnestly sit around the table and eat in celebration of. We'll say, well, it's about family. Well, our family was killed to even create Thanksgiving. Right. New Year's, what are we resolving? Get Colossians 2 and 8. What are we resolving as a people with our New Year's resolution? It ain't even the New Year. Right. We still in the dead of the winter. Right. right. See, for, for the so-called white man who's oppressed us for so long, the dead of anything is how he prospers. Bring it up. Would you agree? Would you agree? Now watch this. I'm going to ask this question. Y'all two right here. What was your New Year's resolution? What was your New Year's resolution? 
Not sure. What was your New Year's resolution? Make money. For what? What is that money going to solve? Because that's what a resolution is. It's supposed to solve the problem. Hey, hey, come here. Hey, he's just picking up uh, the flyer. So, what is your money going to solve? Say it again. Your problem. All right, so what, what type of problems do you have? Because I can guarantee you, money don't solve all problems. Will money get us out of slavery? Huh? Or will you still have to pay taxes? Huh? So money don't solve all problems. It ain't got us free yet, has it? So watch this. I'm, I'm going to give you a problem that maybe you can solve. Maybe even before getting your money. What's your nationality? Come close. Come close. I'm, I'm asking because a lot of our people don't know who they are. Right? You agree? So what's your nationality? Said Christian. White people are Christians. You got East Indian Christians. Who are you? So what makes you different from them? Is there a difference? There isn't. So why your people get locked up more than their people? Bring it out. Why do their people own stores and why do their people get to change the face of your neighborhood, but you don't get to do that? Bring it out. Huh? Because before they got the money, they had an identity. Right. They knew what they stood for. They right. knew what their cultural background is enough to make it work for their people. Right. Do you get any money for them changing the face of your neighborhood? Do, do your equity grow as they change the property values in your neighborhood? Why don't you own this store that used to be a black owned store? Why is it that some other nation owns this store that used to be yours? Why? Because we lost track of who we are as a people. Bring it out. You understand that? So money is only going to run you back into that situation. And you're going to, uh, matter of fact, what, what you hold? Colossians 2 and 8, read. The book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Uh -huh. You know, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Now, I got a question. Spoil. What does that mean? If something is spoiled, what does that mean? Huh? Okay. Y'all just bought food, right? That's a sin on the Sabbath day to buy and sell yeah, on no. the Sabbath. Peace. But if they made your food and it was spoiled by the time you got home, could you eat it? Would it be any good for your body? So God is giving a warning right now to his children. You understand that? It says what? Beware, lest any man spoil you. Lest any man spoil you. Spoil your mind. Bring right now, everybody thinking money is going to solve all their problems. Teach. But that's how spoiled we have become. You got a lot of men putting on dresses, having sex with other men just to get a bag. Bring it out. You have women who, shoot, who are killed. Their own family, their own sister, their own baby. They'll kill just to get the bag. Right. They will choose chaos over peace as a people just to get the bag. Peace. Are we not seeing that as a people? Peace. Like we, we can't just fake around with it. Right. But they got money. They got millions of dollars. But their life is in shambles just for a, money with the face of the people who put us in slavery. Bring it out. So what does the money really mean if you don't have any cultural identity? Right. Read on. Spoil you. Through philosophy and vain deceit. So this covetous nowadays is a philosophy and it's rooted in lies. Rooted in lies because you don't know your nationality. Do you? What's your nationality? If you put out a job application, what would you say? Black. You say black. What about you? Black. 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 Right. But where is the land of black? Who is the president or congressman or consulate of black we, because it doesn't exist right we were called black once we were made slaves right you understand that right now how old are you 16 how old are you 15 now by this age do you know a long time ago there was a man named willie lynch he's a part of it i want i want you to hear this we will read that script again remind me willie lynch i'm gonna ask you what his name is in a little you heard of him all right, so we're going to tie Willie Lynch to this scripture. Read. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Uh-huh. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So, 
this, these lies will confuse you to where you do what your enemies say to do rather than doing what Christ already wrote for you to acknowledge. Y'all understand that? Now, what was his name again? Dang, y'all forgot that that quick? Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch wrote letters to all slave masters and taught them how to take over their slaves. You understand that? By the eight, he said, by the age of a young man being 16, you're 16, you're 15. What? He said you will already be programmed to be a good, docile slave. You ever read the really Willie Lynch, brother? Did, so did I just quote a fact from Willie Lynch? Where it says that by 16, in the making of a slave, by the age of 16, they would have already made and programmed the young men to be good economic value in their slave control. You got a fact. Well, if you're under control, uh, the mother of you already that from the Right. They, they already set up the system. If I got the black woman, I got you. Right. So by the age of 16, the black woman has already programmed those young men to be physically strong, but mentally what? By the age of five. No, but they said by the age of, yeah. I'm quoting it specifically, yeah. by the age of five, you're correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everything that they're learning in love, yeah, she's in, in place, yeah. right, yeah. That, that sense of autonomy, yes, they've already got them by five, but by 16, oh, they physically fit, and I can put him in the field that I ain't got to worry about him turning on me. You understand? What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's Nation Time.